welcome to lesson 25 on flow control valves of the course on industrial automation. Flow control valves are very important. So, after learning the lesson, the student should be able to describe the importance of flow control valves. They are found everywhere in process industries. Learn the structure of major types of flow control valves. Learn about the their flow characteristics because that is very important in uh, designing the applications. And finally, the how to actuate these valves and how to affect their characteristics to achieve a certain uh, characteristic of the process control loop. So, these are the topics that the student is expected to learn from this lesson. So, the first of all, let us have a look at the importance of flow control. Flow control is probably the most important control in, uh, in a process control application and as we shall see during our process control module that flow control loops form a part of most type of control loops. For example, they are parts of flow loops where directly flow has to be controlled, flow is the final objective of control. They are parts of temperature loops because temperature is generally controlled by controlling flow of either a coolant or and let us say steam for heating. This is not stream, this is steam. Of, of course, for level loops because by integrating flow only you have level. So, all level control is essentially flow control. Similarly, pressure loops because again pressure control is <coughs> achieved by using flow control. And Composition loops because compositions of products are typically dependent on the uh, compositions of the components in a let us say a reactor. So, if you want to control the composition of a particular product, flow control is often a very important part of that uh, control application. So, we see that for most types of control applications, flow control is a part, and the element that finally achieves the control is the flow control valve. So, it is so its importance cannot be overstated and uh, as we shall as we need to uh, mention again slight spelling mistake. So, uh, this is a valve flow is actually a function of valve uh, uh, the pressure drop across the valve and this uh, and the stem position as we shall as we perhaps know that <coughs> by uh, Bernoulli's equation: the flow of a <coughs> flow through a through an orifice, a flow control valve is is essentially an orifice, and it is the dimensions of the orifice which are varied, is proportional to uh, proportional to a root over of delta p. Delta p is the pressure difference across the valve, and k is the proportionality constant which contains among other things a uh, what we what we call a discharge coefficient or cv so the flow con the in flow control valves it is this k or this discharge coefficient of the valve which is changed by changing the orifice dimensions so that is the way we achieve flow control <coughs> now uh, So, first of all we see the various kinds of valves and the first kind of valves that we see are globe valves. Globe valves are so, before we we must understand the various parts. So, I am going to hatch it. So, this is the these are the ports. This particular flow control valve, this is inlet port, this is outlet port, this is another 
component of the body. Not this one, not I'm sorry, not this one, not this one. This this part, this part. This is the body right. So the fluid <coughs> in fact there are this is a this is a top and bottom guided, top and bottom guided means the, the, the basic valve assembly movement is guided and in the top and at the bottom and it is a double seated globe valve. So, there are two seats, one seat is here, another seat is here. So, actually the fluid enters through this and will go through this uh, uh, when this valve will rise when this valve will rise it will go through this and will flow out similarly it will go through this it will go through this path and go out so since there are two seats it's it's a it's a it's a double seated globe valve one of the advantages of double seating is that the force <coughs> as you can see that the fluid when it flows through the valve it actually exerts a, a pressure on uh, this, this, this valve mechanism. This is called the stem and these are called the plugs. These are the plugs so the plugs actually come and this is this, this is the seat and the plug actually comes and sits over the seat and seals the seals the orifice and when the valve opens this plug goes up so the fluid flows through the orifice and this plug movement is is uh, actually realized by moving the stem to which the plug is connected so obviously there is the fluid exerts force on the plug and the plug sometimes has to work against this force so to reduce for double seated valves although they are not so popular nowadays but double seated valves one of the biggest advantages of double seated valves is that since the force when the liquid is flowing in this direction <coughs> and the force that the liquid exerts in this direction are opposing each other so the net force on the on the on the stem is actually small so therefore it requires a a smaller capacity of the actuator to 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 make a movement but still nevertheless these valves are not so popular because of mainly two reasons firstly that single seated valves are can be realized with a much smaller size <coughs> number one and number two is that because of you know slight mechanical uh, problems it, 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 it is very difficult to ensure that both the plugs actually seal seal the uh, seal the orifice at, at the same time and therefore often you have problems of leaking through the valve the, like the shut off of the valve is not so tight. So, it is for this reason that people nowadays prefer uh, single seated valves. So, this is a single seated valve you know you this is the plug this is the plug you can see that this is the seat on which the plug sits this is the seat. this is the stem this is the, these are the bodies this is the body so the fluid actually flows like this like this like this so this is the fluid path when the valve opens <coughs> so this is the inlet port inlet and this is the outlet port so this is a top entry top entry because the valve stem enters from the top top guided here there's only one guidance one guiding piece that is top guided not not top and bottom guided 
single seated because there is only one seat globe valve. So, <coughs> these valves are one of the most common types of valves used in the process industry. Next are ball valves. These valves have the, in the previous case the, the stem actually moves in a linear fashion up and down. In for these valves the stem actually rotates. So, it is a so it requires a rotary actuator it can be directly coupled to a motor. So, you see that actually you have a ball a ball like structure through which there is a hole. <coughs> so, you can see the hole this is the, the this is the ball these are ball valves and this is the hole through the this is the hole through the ball. So, now suppose so this is the hole suppose so when the ball is in this position then you can understand that this is the the inlet port and this is the outlet port <coughs> so when the when suppose the fluid is coming like this is the inlet port and this is the outlet port so when the hole is aligned with the inlet port and outlet port holes then the fluid can flow from inlet to outlet on the other hand if the ball rotates then the flow is blocked so it is by rotating the ball that various amounts of flows can be realized right so <coughs> this is the basic principle of a ball valve <coughs> for example this is a multipore ball valve so you can see the ball this is a this is a cross section so the ball is you know like this semi cylindrical ellipsoidal and these are the holes so the, in this case this has this can take care of three ports so you can see that in various positions of the ball if the ball is aligned like this then liquid can flow from here to here if it is aligned this way it can flow from this to this or this to this so under the various positions of the ball valve you can have <coughs> various kinds of various ports can be connected to various others right this is a t ported ball valve you can have an angle ported ball ball valve and things like that so this is the basic principle of ball valves <coughs> this is this picture shows how when a when a when a ball valve rotates then how the flow throttling takes place so you see that as as it is as it is rotating as it is rotating so this the the effective area of flow be, gets reduced so as it rotates slowly the effective area of flow will get reduced and therefore the flow will get reduced so the flow gets throttled <coughs> this is another kinds of ball valve where the where the where the ball is of a certain shape so it is called a characterized ball valve so here you, you can see that as again as it rotates this this surface <coughs> slowly comes and closes the flow and therefore the flow flow can be throttled or it can be completely shut off <coughs> so these are this is another kind of ball valve called the characterized ball valve <coughs> the third kind of valve actually there are various kinds of valves we are going to only talk about some major ones but there are at least 10 15 different types of valves which are which are used in various uh, kinds of applications in the industry diaphragm valve pinch valve uh, sliding gate valve etc etc so this is another kind of valve which is called a butterfly valve so basic idea is that this is butterfly valves are used in large pipes they are they are also used for they are apart from you know uh, applications in let us say uh, liquid applications like uh, water water flow control etc they are they are also used in uh, gas applications like they are used in uh, heating ventilation air conditioning applications of large buildings where the air flow needs to be controlled so in such applications butterfly valves are also used <coughs> so basic idea is that in all valves there has to be an there has to be a variable obstruction right so it is this this disc this disc which is the which creates the obstruction and, and there is a there is a shaft or a pin 
about which so you can understand that you can understand that this is this this is the butterfly valve and there is basically a shaft runs across it and this shaft is driven so this this valve is actually <coughs> this valve is actually uh, stuck to this and if you if, if if you rotate this actuator then this valve can be either in this position or in this position so if you have a pipe here if you have a pipe here then if you connect it in this position then it's open if you connect it this position if you put it in this position then it's closed right <coughs> so exactly that is the that is the position so the, the these these two positions are shown so this is the open position of the <coughs> of the disk open position and this is the closed position of the disk both positions are shown closed position and this is the shaft or pin which is driven to to move the disk various shapes of disks are used to to you know again to reduce the torque requirement on the shaft or to reduce noise so these such big disks when you have a fast flowing fluid can can sometimes vibrate and create noise so uh, so this is this is a picture which shows that so look from a side when the when the disc is in this position then the damper or uh, then the damper is perpendicular to flow and the valve is closed when it is moving then it's throttling or controlling the flow and when it is in this position then when damper is parallel to flow then it's completely open <coughs> So, there are various kinds of disc which are used as I said to take care of various factors like torque and noise. Now, we so we have seen three different types of valves characterized in terms of construction right. Now, we shall characterize valves in, in another way depending on their flow characteristics. So, depending on their flow characteristics valve can valve can be generally characterized in into three different classes one is <coughs> i mean butterfly valves are typically of equal percentage uh, type so that's why and butterfly was written so one is this equal percentage so another is linear and the third one is quick opening so this equal percentage valve is you can see equal percentage means that if you if you have a this is percent lift percent lift means the stem if it is lifted by a certain percentage this the stem is moving so so percent lift or or percent stem position this, this it may not be though it's called lift it, it may not be always a lift you know sometimes it may be a rotation also basically means that the percent of the total stem, stem movement <coughs> so it says that if you increase the stem movement by x percent then y percent the of the current flow will in so the flow will increase by y percent of the current flow right so if you make x percent change <coughs> if you make a delta x x percent of full scale so if you make a 20 percent change here then maybe 5 percent of the current flow which is here will take place on the other hand if you make a 20 percent change here <coughs> then 5 percent of the current flow which is here will take place if you make 20 percent change here then 5 percent of the current flow which is here will take place so you see that for the same 20 percent change at 20 percent 40 percent 60 percent 80 percent the change in flow is going to gradually increase right giving rise to this characteristics so an equal percentage of the current flow will take place if you make a certain a certain fixed percentage of lift change that is the that is the reason why these valves are called equal percentage so you can easily analyze you can easily understand that this sort of a characteristic exponential kind of characteristic arises so uh, on the other hand we have linear which is obvious that is for a certain percent of 
lift change, a certain fixed percentage of the total full scale change not current flow will take place. So, it is a linear it is guided by constant. Actually the linear and the equal percentage are mostly used in process applications. Quick opening valves are you know like our like our bathroom taps are, <coughs> are typically quick opening. So, you must have seen that <coughs> if you the almost full flow is realized by a maybe even one turn or one and a half turns of the tap while if you move it more and more then not much flow increase takes place. So, these valves there is a quick <coughs> increase of flow and then for the rest of the movement there is very little flow. So, it is kind of opposite of the equal percentage and they are typically used more in you know uh, on off kind of applications or, or some certain special kinds of process control applications, but, but most of the control applications <coughs> use linear and equal percentage valves. Remember one thing that these characteristics have assumed that these characteristics are called inherent characteristics and are provided by the manufacturer inherent characteristics of the valve and are provided by the manufacturer under conditions that the, that the pressure across the valve is constant. So, they actually maintain the pressure across the valve and then they characterize this curve right. So, this is important to understand and <coughs> now how are these characteristics realized? They are realized by various profiles of the plug. Right. So, in the case of the globe valve here, say we have there are three kinds of these are three plugs which realize equal percentage linear or quick opening characteristics. Now, it turns out one must realize that if you actually put the valve into an application and connect it up with you know other components, pumps, systems, pipes, etcetera, then the inherent characteristic will not be realized. So, the pressure flow characteristic of the of the <coughs> actually the rather the stem lift versus uh, versus flow characteristic of the valve which is provided by the manufacturer which is the inherent characteristic will not be realized because of the fact that delta p will not remain constant. So, how does that happen? So, you see that when you <coughs> when you are connecting so this goes to the system wherever you want to send this flow and we are just you know arbitrarily assuming that the head of the that the system takes a particular kind of static head. So, what happens is that during flow there are actually pressure drops. So, there is there is some pressure drop at the inlet of the pump then the pump raises the pressure that is the job of the pump it creates a pressure head. Then this <coughs> flows through the pipe. So, again there is some friction loss and there is some pressure head. Then there is a drop across the valve because all because all valves will have a you know if it has to flow through an orifice there has to be a delta p then again there is a drop at along the pipe and then the available pressure at the system is there so this is the way the pressure drops and actually as we shall see now <coughs> that now as now as we know that these pressure various pressure drops vary uh, vary with flow itself so, for example, the, the pipe friction pressure loss will also rise with flow. Similarly, if the, the pump head because there, there are pressure, pressure losses inside the pump. So, the pump head available the pump head that will be generated will also be uh, will also be lower. Similarly, here we have assumed a static head pressure it may be constant or in some cases even this for example, if the if the if the fluid is a you know kind of heat exchanger then again the heat exchanger is actually nothing but a nothing but a intertwined length of pipe. So, basically the the pressure head across the system will also increase with flow. So, eventually what what happens is that see the pump is the prime mover right. So, the total pump head available is this one and that must be equal to the sum of the drop in pipes drop in the valve plus drop in the system. So, as the drop in the valve uh, uh, drop in the pipe and the drop in the uh, system rises so there is less and less <coughs> delta p available across the valve and so the flow actually reduces right. So, uh, so the operating points that are established will always have delta p falling. 
So, the valve differential pressure available actually falls quite sharply with uh, the flow. So, it is not constant. In effect, what happens is that <coughs> for example, this is the case of an equal percentage valve at some delta p. So, you see that the inherent characteristic is almost like a like an equal percentage nearly. On the other hand, if you put the valve that valve into along with a pipe and a pump and a system, then initially there is a lot of pressure delta p available because there is hardly any drop in the flow is low. So, there is hardly any drop in the system. So, so the pump, so the valve flow with change in lift because delta p available across the valve is, is now quite high at this stage. So, the, so there is a for a certain change in lift there is a good change in the flow. So, so the rate remains high. On the other hand here you see that in this part for the inherent characteristic the rate of uh, flow change is high, but that much rate of flow change is not achieved in the installed characteristic because of the fact that now the delta p has come down. So, if the delta p has come down then for a then for a given change <coughs> in the lift now so much change which was available see previously when delta p was held constant uh, I mean a lot of change could be possible by changing a certain part of the lift, but now since the delta since the delta p is going to fall. So, therefore, so much change is, is not possible and we get a different characteristic that characteristic is called the installed characteristics and this must be remembered because it is the installed characteristic finally, which is going to decide the decide the characteristic in the process control. So, therefore, <coughs> we must understand that the inherent characteristic gets changed because of pressure drops and the resulting characteristic is called the installed characteristic. So, the same thing happens for uh, linear valves again there is a high higher than inherent we are assuming that the inherent characteristic delta p will be will be maintained you know somewhere in the middle of the delta p range. So, initially you have high you have a higher delta p. So, therefore, the rate of rise is high later on the rate of rise is lower than the inherent characteristic this is what happens. Uh, this is the characteristic for an inherent characteristic for a this thing and they are not so much used. So, the install characteristic is actually not drawn. <coughs> now, these characteristics sometimes you know especially when we are trying to design process control application the valve gain the valve gain also comes along with the process gain. So, if so when we want to decide the decide the controller gain then uh, sometimes it is it is desirable that we change the <coughs> that we change the valve characteristic to actually suit the requirements of the process. For example, as we shall see that we can we may like to 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 have that the valve process combination gain remains more or less flat over the operating region. This may be a requirement for designing a good good controller. So, so what I am trying to say is that from the you know there is there is an electronic controller from which output is, is actually going to the valve actuator the valve stem is being moved by some mechanism called actuator as we shall see. So, this is going to the actuator. Now, between this control and the actuator sometimes we can put some signal processing blocks which are for example, in this case this is a this is called a multiplier relay right. right? So, what we are achieving here is that the see the signal available at the A port is a multiplication of B to C port. So, suppose this is this is increased. So, immediately this will increase then then this will this will also increase and therefore, this will increase sh sharper. So, what happens is that if you if you if you change this linearly if, if that is if the if the input is changed in a linear fashion over time then the output will change in this fashion right. So, what happens is that effectively actually so, so if you if, if you put this relay now then then what will happen is that a linear valve will start behaving like an equal percentage valve. So, what we what is what is 
what is the message is that by, by, by putting such signal processing blocks, we can change the valve characteristics. I mean, depending on the availability, sometimes it, it may not be it may not be easy to locate a, a, a valve of that appropriate characteristic from the market, but by signal processing after the controller, we can always change the valve characteristics, right? 